Hey, what's going on everyone? Kenan here and it is a beautiful day. A little bit cool, not cold, but uh, definitely cool out right now. I am getting things done today. Lots of animals need attention. We're thawing out some rodents to feed some of the critters. Uh, bikes are looking good. That's always fun, right? And uh, more importantly, I've just been working my butt off the last couple days. Uh, hope you guys have enjoyed the video so far. Our friend Charlie, our new friend Charlie, uh, just amazing, amazing facility. And it's reinvigorated me to just get to work and make my place the best it could possibly be. And that's why I love to bring you guys all the different people that I get to meet. Uh, so here's what we got going on. We just got done draining good old Slink's uh, pond. I got to clean it up some more. We're going to get that going. I'm going to tackle a bunch of different projects today and you're coming with me. And most importantly, we're going to see the animals and get to spend some time with them. Plus, we'll do a little update on Inky the Black Monitor, the Black Dragon rather, and of course, Bobby Rubino. So uh, let's get to it. Let's get Slinky's cage dialed. There he is, Slinky's uh, just getting himself up and at him here. We're still working. We've got his pond clean. We've got his yard raked up. He's starting to walk out right now. But I want to go in and I want to do something really quick to Guapo and Lola. Hi guys, how are you? Their water bowl I just sprayed out. But you know, what happens is the Chinese box turtles climb in here and bring all this dirt. I'm gonna go grab a few more pieces of this slate and I'm gonna kind of frame the rest of this little bowl. We've got water that pours out, I'll fill it back up. This way, the Chinese box turtles might not drag as much dirt into it. So let's go ahead and grab a few flat pieces. We gotta hustle because Slinky is starting to come out and uh, I don't really wanna deal with him coming out into the yard today uh, just because I'm filming, I'm working and we've gotta keep this show rolling, people. Uh, look we've got plenty of this nice imported limestone from my friends at Yardco Rocks these guys hooked me up oh my gosh a couple of years ago with this maybe a year and a half ago awesome place check them out uh, Yardco Rocks they got a lot of cool stuff and they do mail order if you are interested in really getting some interesting stone products they're the people to talk to uh, this is not easy I'm, I'm, I'm squeezing this rock under my armpit as you can see but uh, I will go through the pain to make sure you guys have a video. Uh oh, what the hell is this? Get over here. Oh God, this is, this is trouble. Come on, I don't want you over here. Come on, I'm gonna gently scoot her back there. I know it seems rude, but it's better than her getting eaten. I don't know what would happen at this point with her and the slinkers. All right, so I've got this. Let's just fill this up real quick since uh, that needs to happen. Let's spray it out. And then I just kind of bring down the, the pressure. And we go ahead and we'll fill this up real quick, like kinda. But remember, I also have that faucet that comes on a timer. And that's good for now. Let's shut it off. Pull this over here. I don't want our little Lola. Oh, see, and now we can also do this. See, I got something of a three ring circus, people. <laughs> I got a lot going on. It's not normally like this, only when I film. But hey, like I said, I like bringing you guys the reality of my situation. There's the slinkers. We're going to shut this and uh, he'll be fine. So again, I just walk gently behind him. We're going to shut this one off real quick. We don't need a time lapse because we're working right now. Okay. Hello. How are you? So I told you we'd get to visit with a lot of the uh, critters here today. And that's just what we're doing. Let me go ahead and put you guys over here. I think you'll be able to see me. I'm gonna pull that fern out. She can eat that. Oh yeah, just get on down. And um, 
I don't, I'm really not trying to make this perfect. I'm just trying to create a little buffer to where these guys will cl oh, clamber over these rocks as opposed to just the soil. So we'll do it like that. I think that looks cool. Very simple. That's it. Pretty simple, huh? And then, of course, we've got, we can make little hides where they can kind of scurry under with this old cypress and rock logs and stuff. There, it looks good. Very simple. Remember, there is going to be quite a big change happening because what's going on is, of course, Guapo and Lola are, here's what I'm debating doing. I'm going to probably remove this, okay? Remove the monkey trail enclosure, move them somewhere else. Guapo and Lola are gonna go here. I'm gonna fill in this pond and create a plateau, as I've said numerous times. The rhino iguanas are gonna move into here. So it's gonna get a little switched around, but it'll be really cool. And Slinky, of course, is gonna go out into the new enclosure. Remember, the guys are coming in March from Aquascape and they're gonna build it. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. Slinky's thing's filling up. Slinky's out. We're going to stop back. We will feed Slinky here. And I want to go handle a couple more little punch punches, little punch list I've got today. Let's go do a few more things. And uh, you're coming with me. We got three latches, very important. And then we have the safety door. Again, another important thing to have when you have large terrestrial lizards that can run around. Move this over here. Awesome, man. I'm breaking a sweat on this cool day. Hey, what's going on there, young lady? There's my girl. There's Petra. And Petro, I don't know where he is. He's out somewhere. Uh, yeah, this is what I need next. Because we're going to go to the Cherry Heads. And we got to clean their water out. I noticed that needed to be cleaned out. Uh, it's a pretty simple project. So I'm just going to spray that down real quick. See, I got this nice long... Oh, hey. What's up, Leopard Tortoise? How you doing? Just hanging out. So we're gonna take this, and I'm gonna put you guys, there we go. There we are. You guys are along with me. Okay, so what I like to do is I just spray it out. It overflows all week long. So the water is pretty clean, but I wanna just spray out some of the dust and pine needles and things like that that kind of blow into it. But you know what's funny is pine needles are actually a source of vitamin C. You can make a tea out of them. Um, so I wonder, this is a hypothesis of mine, is that a lot of these pools that tortoises drink out of have leaves that fall into them. What kind of benefit are these tortoises getting from drinking out of these pools with these, almost like a tea? Almost like some kind of natural herbal tea that nature gives them. So it's pretty interesting to think. Is there any benefit from that? Possibly. So I'm just spraying out here. Give it a little more juice. I made these uh, out of cement a long time ago, back when I was really interested in carving cement. So they aren't necessarily the easiest to clean but they get the job done and I have irrigation tubing and that irrigation tubing comes on a timer and fills these things up and they overflow. So the water's clean, but I do this once or twice a week. There we go, pretty good. And um, of course, we've already got a tortoise coming on over to get a nice cool fresh drink of water, one of our cherry heads. So I'll just go ahead and lift it up, place it over here and see what it wants to do. So I let that fill up. I do a quick check around here um, just to see how everyone's doing. Most of these guys, look at it, there are all the elongated are out. We've got uh, blossoms happening here on the mangroves. So that means we're gonna have mangroves in a few months, which is nice. In here are the other cherry heads. I'm sure they pooped in here. That's not that terrible, but there's everybody just kind of hanging out. And uh, I'll show you guys the babies here later. Remember, we are going to go inside and just do a quick update on Inky, Bobby Rubino, and of course, my baby cherry heads that I've just got a ton of right now. Um, 
There is, now is that Petra? That is Petra. I think Petra, where is she? Is she in here? Let's see. It's always fun to check, right? Always gotta be checking the critters. Hey, no, there's Petro. Oh, there's a big turd by him too. Yuck. Let me, uh, since I've seen that, let's get rid of it. Who wants to, who wants your face next to a turd whilst you rest? I know I wouldn't. Excuse me, Petro. Come on up here, buddy. Oh my God. Is this a lovely guy? Here, I'll let him just hang out right up here. He can get a little sun. You guys watch him while I uh, get rid of the turd. I'm gonna use a very high-tech way of doing it. A couple of palm fronds. There you go. Turd is away. It's a turd sandwich, otherwise known as a sandwich. All right, very cool. It's all getting renewed. Anyway, here is Petro. How beautiful is this lizard, huh? Help him shed some of these little spikes. Very good rhino iguana. Oh, come on, buddy. Oh, that one's tough. Okay, wait. There it is. Oh, you can tell when they're ready to come off because if they get very opaque. But he's beautiful, huh? Look at that face. Look at that face. And he's so agreeable. And there's his girlfriend back in there. There she is. Oh, I love this guy. Petro and Petra. Multi-horned rhino iguanas. Just gorgeous animals. You can see the bulges down here, guys. Those are where the hemipenes are. Um, he is a male. And he's just got that male face, you know? He's a little bit more robust up here. And he'll continue to grow and continue to show you the sexual dimorphism uh, that this species has. Very, very cool. I think she's gonna, she gonna come into the house. Let's see, let's see what she does. They're so fun just to hang out with. And like I said, oh, you're gonna climb up and say, what is he doing out? She's jealous, I think, of you. I think she's jealous. I don't like to make her jealous. So let's go ahead grab this beauty it's okay i got you they get a little nervous because they're terrestrial and they don't like to fall down there you go buddy all right he was enjoying that i think okay we're gonna put this back down we're filling up the water behind me i believe it should be finished yes it is look at that okay and there you have that oh remember we've got those rodents uh defrosting hopefully they'll be uh good to go here in a moment and then we can have some fun and feed some of the critters oh so cool here's pinky this is my lady good day my lady i'm going to be feeding you a large rodent soon you just hang tight all right you just hang tight we'll be going in with her in a moment but i just wanted to check the front ponds um i did a clean out on this pond sophia's pond a little while back and uh it's been working great i bought this really handy dandy power washer and that's made all the difference when it comes to cleaning the cleaning the rock here in the basin but what I'm going to do is just simply every once in a while you just got to grab a handful of leaves and toss them out okay it's been windy so that's what I'm going to do I pull these out allow it to flow again at a higher rate and that's about it I mean these ponds are pretty darn good. The maintenance on them, once they're start and established, and once you've got these aquascape ecosystems going, there really isn't a lot of work. And to be honest, you guys know me, I actually love getting my hands on with these ponds because this is where my animals live. And uh, it's always fun to come over here and see them. So look at this. There is the Hamiltonite. Hey, what do you guys say? I fire this one up. And uh, we go underwater and kind of look at the Hamiltoni. Um, I'm sure you guys would dig that, right? But I want to go in there. I want to show you this really cool turtle. We haven't seen it in a little while. Okay, guys, we're going underwater right now. Here we go. I'm going to leave this camera on so you guys can hear me as I talk about this Hamiltoni, which is an awesome turtle that I've always wanted. We have two of them, two females, and this one loves to hide, and they're very good at hiding. Uh, that coloration really does them a lot of justice when you have a lot of uh, detritus at the bottom of the pond. Similar to our spotted turtles, these guys blend in very, very nicely when they're in dark colored mud because those light blotches make them look like they've actually got leaves around them. So very, very cool turtle. 
Uh, the pond is looking crystal clear. There's a lot of flow. I've got two pumps keeping this thing clean. There is a Badiger borneensis, the painted river terrapin, underneath one of my circulating tubes. Uh, just really, really cool stuff. But I love it, man. So awesome to see these guys doing so well. Um, it's been an incredible winter where we've had quite a lot of drama as far as cool weather. Um, not a fan of that. We've had cold weather too. But as you can see, everybody is doing good. Who is that over there, guys? Let's go see who's hanging out over here. Is this a, oh, it's an Asian. Yep, it's an Asian box turtle. Just enjoying a little cool pool there. We've got the radiated tortoises out here. I want to double check my Galops and Aldabra. They should be doing well this afternoon. Oh, look, there's Darwin way out there. Oh, and here's Socrates and Nostradamus. Very, very cool. Everybody is doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. We cleaned their water out a couple days ago. It's got a lot of leaves in it from the wind, but they're doing well. So no problems there. All right, we're going to mosey on over to this front pond and just make sure everyone in here is doing good. You know, when you come out and you do this work, this is when you see the animals behaving normally. This is when you see them laying eggs, moving around. You get a good idea of their overall health and well-being. Um, there's one of my other Batagaboniensis hiding in there. We've got the pink belly side necks in here. But I want to double check this. I always like to open this up. You guys know it. And we double check to make sure that there are no issues or no turtles stuck in the leaf basket. That's another good thing about these Aquascape uh, leaf baskets, skimmers, is they're designed to keep animals alive. Now look at this. There is, there is, oh gosh, come on out. Ah, oh, it's a new Reeves turtle my buddy Chad House gave me. He stopped over while I wasn't home. He showed me a photo of it. I said, ah, go ahead and put it in the front. So this little gal was a rescue and uh, she's living here at Camp Cannon. Let's put her on the land. This way she might take a little while before she finds this darn leaf skimmer again. But let's go ahead and we'll put her over here. Let's put her over here because there's another Reeves turtle in this pond. But I'm going to go ahead and put her up in the stream here. Let's do this. There she goes. All right, so she's just gonna hang out here. Reeves turtles, I love them. Very, very friendly turtle. And um, gosh, I don't know, just stoked. They're always willing to take them. They can live out front and they do very well here. Up oh, there she is. You're gonna go, lady. Go on. It's a nice babbling brook for you to play in. I'm sure there's all kinds of invertebrates and plants that you can nibble on too. So she's uh, doing really good out here. I'm glad I came out and made sure that she wasn't stuck for too long inside the skimmer. And that's just one of the things I do. Just keep an eye on the animals. And um, man, it's a lot of fun. But how beautiful is that turtle? Just beautiful. All right, I don't think she'll move while we're here. So I'm gonna get out of here. Let's go check these mice, uh, excuse me, rats. Let's go check these rats, see how they're doing. Uh, they may need just a little bit more time to defrost. I'll throw some more hot water in them. But um, we're going to wind up going inside and we're going to see what's going on with Inky and Bobby Rubino. And of course, those baby cherry heads I have. Lots of baby cherry heads. Okay, here we go. Back at one of my favorite places to hang out. All right, they're still kind of cool. I'm going to just run a little more hot water on these guys. They're almost done. They should be done. Oh yeah, the ones at the bottom are done. They just need a little bit hotter water. So I'm gonna, what I do is I'll dump the water like this. Just dump it, dump it, dump it. And now we heat it up. I wanna shout out to Casey Jones for hooking me up with these beautiful uh, tongs, these beautiful forceps. Uh, thank you so much. They're a fantastic little gift. And that was one of the viewers here on the channel. Really helped me out. So thank you. Well, that's good and hot now. Good and hot. We're going to let this just dribble out nice and hot. I'll be back here in a moment. But let's go see. You're going to love this. You guys are going to love what's going on. I've been busting my butt trying to figure things out. The best way to keep um, our friend Inky 
And um, let's see. So look what I've done. You notice a change? Um, so Kevin, in his, uh, in his wisdom and his tutelage, um, was always telling me, keep the enclosure very bare. Now, Inky was having a little bit of an issue with her eyes. They were kind of, um, they were, she was having a hard time opening them. So I thought, well, was it the heat? Is it the beginning of a respiratory? Something like that. Um, and uh, then I started, I changed the parameters. I upped the heat, upped the humidity, but I wasn't able to keep humidity in very well with these enclosures. It just evaporates and comes right out. So I went back to an arboreal vision cage, put her in here. I went very, very simple, just like Kevin told me to do. Um, I, I always love to make natural enclosures, but I, I think the reality is when you're dealing with a baby, you gotta just set it up to make it the easiest way to get these animals growing and healthy and happy. So I put the newspaper down, very simple cat litter dish here. Uh, yeah, a litter pan, um, a small one that Inky can crawl in, simple little terrace and some ceramic that this is about 130 degrees. Let's see how hot that is actually, just so you can get an idea. Um, they don't lay on it all day long, but they do want to heat up very quickly. So let's see how hot is that. Look at this guys, 118 degrees right underneath this um, heat lamp that we've got from Fluker, the neodymium lamp. You can see it up there. Um, and then there she is. Let's get her out. So, so watch this. Watch this lizard. Look at the, there's no real fuss. Look at that, no real fuss. And she is warm. She is so warm. Look at the eyes. Perfect little face, perfect little eyes. They um, just, I'm so happy, man. I can't thank Kevin enough and the guys in Nerd. I mean, this is like, I've been so fortunate to have friends in the industry. Oh, she wanted to go back where I was safe. Uh, friends in the industry that just appreciate what I'm doing and back me up and man, I'll back them up too. So Inky is doing amazing. Bobby Rubino, man, I've been giving him the septazidine. I've been keeping the heat going. I've been actually now giving him critical care food um, because I want to make sure he's getting the proper amount of nutrition while he's sick. And he still has these strange movements. So I don't know what's going on, but um, he is still alive. He is still a living creature. And um, I am busting my butt with Bobby. He seems like he's got a little bit more energy, a little bit more pep, but I'm not happy with his eyes lately. So, um, you know, I've we've done the flagell, which is a, a wormer, uh, an antiparasitic antibiotic. We've got the ceftazidine. Um, so right now with this critical care that I'm tube feeding him, um, it actually has the natural gut flora for a carnivore. So it's got the right bacteria that a carnivore would need. So he's still alive. He's still with us. It's been almost a month since I've noticed he was sick. Um, and usually guys, you know what happens with reptiles. They crash and then they die. But he's still amongst the living. I'm busting my butt. Um, I'm showing you everything. I don't lie on this channel. Um, I just get right to work and do what I'm supposed to do. Uh, so what I've also done is I've simplified his enclosure as well. We've got heat, UVB lighting. We got a ceramic heat emitter from Fluker, the Fluker lamps. We've also got an area for him to get out of the heat if he wants to. Um, but I've done newspaper because I'm wondering, uh, it, did the bark that I got from Home Depot, did that potentially have something on it that caused these guys maybe an eye issue or um, I don't know. I just wanted to simplify Bobby Rubino. Um, I just, there he is. He's still, I don't know, guys. What do you guys think? I mean, he's looking a little bit better. I'll be happy. Um, he ate a pinky, but regurgitated it last week. So I went back to giving him some critical care. I'm just going to kind of be very hands on with him um, at the Listen, if this lizard winds up pulling through, um, he will be extremely tame because I handle him twice a day. I'm doing a lot of work with him. Now, let me show you this. <laughs> How about all these little beauties? All these baby cherry heads just hatched out within the last month. Um, all of them are going to new homes. They've all been spoken for, but isn't this amazing? 
So cute, and uh, I got a great little time lapse I'll throw in right here so you guys can see them all eating, doing their thing. Um, as soon as the weather gets better, I'll be able to get these animals to their new home, so I'm really excited. We have one red foot right here hanging out. Oh, wait a minute, nope, that's a cherry head. There was a red foot somewhere. Oh my gosh, maybe. No, no, this is how you tell the difference, guys. You have to look at the plastron, actually, no, they are all cherry heads. Ah, good for us. All cherry heads here. Very, very nice. Okay, so that's what's happening inside. Whoa, do you see this, guys? This is weird behavior that he does. He just freaks out every now and again. I don't know what it is, man, but he gets this burst of life, but it's, it's not necessarily like a very healthy look man it looks like it is some kind of neurological thing i don't know i'm gonna have to maybe go back to the doctor and i'm gonna take blood this week i think that's what we're gonna do next um the blood test will tell us a little bit more um what's happening with them okay so everyone's doing well so that's that's what's going on i've simplified their habitats once i get inky to a size that i feel comfortable putting her into an outdoor habitat that i can walk into um that will be the big change uh, for her uh, because it will now she'll view me as part of her habitat. And uh, let's see. Oh yeah, we are good people. We are good. Let's go ahead and get this going. Oh, I just love it when you guys can come with me on one of my work days because work days are fun days and if you ask me because we get to see the animals, we get to interact with the animals. Um, I love making sure things are dialed. There's so many cool projects coming up and like I said at the beginning of this video, which seems like an eternity ago, um, I basically was just excited that uh, to meet people like Charlie Moorcroft, the Moorcroft Conservation Foundation, um, just seeing good people do good things for their animals and I want to inspire you guys and I also want to remind you guys that Thursday um, we need your help because we are down to the final day that you can comment and help try and dissuade fish and wildlife from doing away with the conditional species permit we're still waiting on our permit for our snake buttercup to come home um, but I need you guys to call in even if you're not from the um, state not from florida you can all call in be a part of this meeting you can say something in the meeting on watch it on zoom but you'll call in on your phone it's going to be very important can you do me a favor and go to us arc florida for all the information it's going to be at 8 30 the meeting starts 9 30 we are the first order of business um, so it's going to be very very important for you guys to show your support for reptile keepers in florida this will affect all of you Okay, not just Floridian reptile keepers. It's going to be a problem for everyone. Come here, girl. Come on. Come on, take this big rat. She's gonna eat a big rat today. This is her big rat day. So let's see her. She likes to come down close to me, I guess. Ooh, that's a nice drop. Let's see her chow this whole thing down. So she's gonna get one massive rat and then we're gonna go feed some more to Slinky. But as I'm talking about this uh, and this beautiful animal, Pinky and Slinky and all my monitors, um, the, the reality is this, they're making these animals prohibited when they had a perfectly good system with the conditional species permits. We were keeping animals uh, properly, they were being inspected. If you put them on the prohibited list, it's just in our opinion, reptile keepers opinion, it's a little bit of government overreach. We all understand that these animals do not belong in the environment, um, but you know, there are, there are better ways. Bans are never a solution. It only infringes on people that have done the right things right. And um, I wanna be able to continue to show you these animals um, that we are able to keep here in Florida in beautiful conditions, healthy conditions. Um, all my animals are cared for. And look at how she does that. She doesn't like when I'm behind her, she wants to whip me, but she'll squeeze that down, no problem. So anyway, would you guys please do me that favor and get to US Arc Florida's Facebook page. There is all kinds of information on how you can join this Zoom meeting for Fish and Wildlife and voice your displeasure and your opposition to the new rule. You don't need to mention me, you just need to mention that you're a reptile keeper, that these animals are important to you and prohibiting them is not going to solve the problem of the animals that are already 
in the ecosystem. If they can do this, guys, with this uh, law, they will certainly not stop. Uh, they there have been talk that they want to make all monitor li monitor lizards illegal in the state of Florida Which would be disastrous for me and slinky So if you love slinky and you want to make sure slinky remains in a good home you guys got to call in We really need you guys to just voice your displeasure uh, They have not made monitors illegal yet But it is something that is being discussed I know the Nile monitor is already pro, uh, already a conditional species. So guys, we need your help. If you love reptiles, we could really use your attention to this. So um, that's all I'll say about it. We'll see you on Thursday. I'll be on the call. Um, again, you don't need to mention me. Uh, it's not about me. It's about the animals and the laws. We want to really keep uh, the ability to keep these beautiful animals in the best possible way. And many of us have spent thousands and thousands of dollars upgrading our habitats to make sure that they're escape proof and to make sure that we're responsible. Um, I hope you guys know that we're, I'm a responsible guy. I do the best I can. So it'd be great if we had some support from you. She's gonna get this thing down. This is really cool. I love to watch her work it. Come on, sweetie. Nice big rodent for her. She just gotta get those big legs uh through that mouth and very similar to a snake they have flexible jaws on their lower mandible um and so they're able to really swallow prey items that might have been larger or bigger than it look at that right down guys is that incredible she used that piece of cork bark to really push it down so now those powerful digestive enzymes are going to go to work and she won't need to eat for a few days that is my girl and one rat of that size, she's good for about a week. All right, sweetheart, do your thing. Let's go get our man Slinky done. I fed Lagatha already last night, so Laggy doesn't need to eat, but I'm gonna feed Slinky and then I'll feed some snakes, but ah, you guys have seen snakes eat. Let's finish this up with our friend uh, Slinky. He's an important ambassador um, for monitor lizards and their intelligence and just they're just cool animals and I hope you guys enjoy this channel. I really do appreciate everyone for stopping by and spending some time with me uh, during the days that I put videos out every Tuesday, Friday and Sunday. So thank you guys so much. I leave you now with some really cool photos. Oh, some video of the most handsome lizard in the world. Oh, not wasting any time. Probably give him about three. Oh yeah, go ahead. You know that, that shake, 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 don't you? Oh, some good news also. I did see a baby brown, no, baby banded water snake in the pond. So life replenished itself. As you remember, Slinky kind of kind of ate one of our snakes, which was not a good moment. But um, there are new ones coming. All right, there we go. There you go. Go ahead, buddy. Oh, yeah, go ahead. You're tough. Give it a good shake. All right, don't forget, guys, like and subscribe. And uh, hey, man, I hope... A lot of you watching this video are gonna be motivated. Get to that Zoom meeting and make sure we can keep the animals that we all love. Otherwise, this video, I don't know, these videos are gonna turn into me playing with like goldfish or something. Who knows? That's a joke. That'll never happen. But anyway, guys, we'll see you later. Thanks for hanging. <laughs>